This is my review of the Remarkable versus the iPad for professionals or students. At any point in the video, leave any questions you have about either of these devices in the comments. My name's Kit, this is Gorilla Physics, and we're all about GCC and A-level physics, but I'm also interested in technology supporting educators, professionals, and students. I think this is really important because connected devices, they change the way that you think. So although these two devices seem pretty different on the face of it, there's some real similarities between them in terms of what you might be buying them for as a professional or as a student. They also fit into similar price ranges. This remarkable one was about 300 quid and this is a 2017 iPad Pro, which well now you can get the equivalent somewhere around that but e-ink devices range from about £300 to £1,000 and iPads range from about £300 to £1,000 as well, new. So if you're looking to make a decision between these two devices, you're looking to spend similar amounts of money. The main difference is what do they intend to replace? And the iPad Pro is actually trying to replace a laptop, whereas the Remarkable is trying to replace paper. And the biggest difference is the screen. This is an e-ink screen and this is a full LCD panel. So Remarkable is taking advantage of all of those things that we love about our e-readers with those e-ink screens. Whereas the iPad boasts one of the best high resolution panels that you can get. Everything I'm going to talk about in this review will really apply to any e-ink reader, the Remarkable 1 or the Remarkable 2 in fact, and anything I'm going to say about this also will apply to any iPad, although this is one of the more premiums, but it is one of the 2017 iPad Pro, so it's not one of the very latest and greatest. But I've tried some of the latest ones, and you know the things I'm going to say are pretty similar between this one and the latest ones. And indeed, the entry-level models for iPad as well. But how am I going to compare two devices which are so very different? Well, I'm going to compare them in all these different categories here, and I suggest that some of those are going to be more important to you than others. And I'm going to leave timestamp so you can use the navigation to go to any areas that interest you the most. Well, let's jump into it. Firstly, let's compare the writing experience. The Remarkable boasts a fantastic writing experience. They are trying their best on the Remarkable to make the writing experience as much as close to paper as it can possibly be. And it really is close to pencil on paper. And you actually have to replace the nibs on this marker due to the fact that they've given this a rough surface so you get the same kind of friction as you would on paper. You even get the sound. This is not something that you're going to buy, for example, an external keyboard for. This is all about that feeling of the marker on the e-ink screen. The thing is that if you're expecting to use the handwriting recognition to turn it into editable text, then I wouldn't recommend this for you. That's a nice feature and it does work remarkably well, but you'll probably be faster actually just typing out on the keyboard. This is all about making hand notes for yourself to use later. You can do some pretty cool drawing things as well though, which I'll talk about next. The Apple Pencil is very good, and this is the Apple Pencil Generation 1, but the Apple Pencil Generation 2 is equally as good and is an improvement on this. It does need to be charged, unlike the Remarkable Pencil, which is a dumb stylus based on Wacom technology. But the reason Apple went for a charged stylus is because it is actually interfacing with the screen at an incredibly high rate. In fact, I think it's like four times the screen refresh rate. So the iPad is sampling the Apple Pencil incredibly many times per second. And that makes it incredibly low latency experience. They've done an amazing job on the Apple Pencils. I was a little bit skeptical at first, but it's a fantastic thing. The, the vector effects as you write in all the apps are very, very pleasing, and you can write very accurately with that low latency. You need to charge the pencil, but actually using the little charging thing here on the Apple Pencil 1, it gets you half an hour charge in 10 seconds of charging. So it's never really like on other pens that I've used that you kind of, you get to the point where you want to use the pen and you realize you haven't charged it and then you've got to wait for a while. I can wait 10 seconds. <laughs> They even engineered this pencil such that when you place it on a table, it will roll until the Apple logo is face up, which is just quite cool really, but also it means that it's not gonna roll off the table very often, although that does happen to me a fair few times still. So actually the feel of writing on glass is not as good as writing on the rough surface of the Remarkable though. But that's not such an issue and people get around that with using these matte screen protectors that give you that friction of writing on paper. So there is an on-screen keyboard and you can also buy cases obviously that have the keyboards on them as well, but none of that's like typing on a real keyboard. So if you were interested in typing on a real keyboard and you did a lot of that, well this wouldn't be the device to replace a laptop anyway, in my opinion. So that's writing and I have to give the writing experience to the Remarkable, so it's 1-0. 
So drawing is our next category. Actually, drawing on the Remarkable is fantastic. I do have a whole video where I talk about drawing on the Remarkable and there's more to come in that series. So watch out for that. The pen is very low latency and it does have pressure levels and it does have tilt as well. You can also use the rubber as you would a normal pencil. It feels incredibly like using a actual pencil on paper. So if you're used to pencil and paper, you can do art which is pretty similar to that. Certainly the pencil option feels incredibly close to a real pencil on paper. Even when you're tilting, so you get the thicker lines to sketch, the different pressure levels, I think it's an incredible thing. I was just impressed really of how I didn't feel like I was learning a new drawing technique. It was just like exactly how I was used to drawing with a pencil. So because of that, it's a real sleeper device for digital art in my opinion. And it also really simplifies things. So if you want to get into digital art and you've never tried drawing with a pen on screen before, then this is a really good one to start with because it is so close to what you might be used to. You know, digital art is hard to get your head around, so it's a good place to start. And it does have layers just like in Photoshop, although it's difficult to blend them and take them off the device in layers. So you need to really work with that on the device. Well, there's one obvious difference straight away, which this is always going to win, the drawing experience versus the remarkable because you, of course, get full color on this. So this is gonna win the drawing category. <laughs> But you do need to be aware that you're going to need to take your time to learn a drawing app. It is like learning a new skill. But once you do learn that, you can do amazing things with this. And if you use the Adobe Creative Cloud apps like I do, well, those apps are getting better all the time and they're getting closer to the full desktop versions for the iPad all of the time. So for drawing, the iPad wins. It's one all. So for reading, the Remarkable is going to win because that's exactly what e-ink was really designed to do. It's a good high resolution e-ink screen and on this device you can use PDF and EPUB. So on the Remarkables you cannot use Kindle for example. So it does limit you slightly but I'm just talking about e-ink screen, reading on those. There are other options if you need to be able to read Kindles for example. There's no backlight on this one but again there are devices that do have backlights. You're never going to get that issue with trying to read in full sun. It's a very matte screen, it's not very reflective at all. You can read anywhere. This is an excellent reading device. I would say the equivalent to paper size is this is A5, so it's not sort of a full size device. But again, there are options if you do want a bigger screen. Reading on the iPad is fine, it's an excellent screen, it's a high resolution screen, so it's fine. But I think reading on any type of backlit panel like this can lead to eye fatigue and it's not like paper. You can use the blue light filter, but I think that it's still never going to be like reading on paper. Also, because it's an iPad, you are going to be interrupted quite regularly with distractions like notifications. So for focused work, I prefer the Remarkable to the iPad for reading. 2-1 Remarkable. For work with mixed media, then there's no contest, I'm afraid. There's a few things you could do on this. You could edit, you could touch up some black and white images maybe. You can mark up documents and send them to yourself or send them to other people. There are these things. So you can do some things on this, but we're talking about a device which has a one gigahertz processor here. Half a gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. So you're not going to be using this as a media editing device. It's not what it's for. But it does manage the simple task that it does do without any lag. So I wouldn't be put off by those specifications. But if you're looking for something to edit mixed media, this isn't it. On iPad now you have full Photoshop and full Lightroom. You've also got fully featured video editing apps. I mean, they really are trying to allow you to use this instead of a laptop. It's not quite going to be a dedicated desktop media editing PC, but there's loads more you can do on the iPad now. The latest iPads are fantastic media machines because they also work really well with the latest video codecs as well. So definitely consider the iPad if you're interested in getting a media editing beast. I think this one's an obvious for media editing, working with mixed media, video, photo, text, everything. The iPad is your choice out, out of these two. For media consumption as well, I'm afraid this is another hands down win for the iPad. You're basically limited to reading PDFs and EPUBs on here. There's not even a web browser and you definitely can't watch videos. There are some hacks to allow you to do more, but I'm thinking that not many of us would choose to watch a video on a low refresh rate black and white screen like this. You can read web articles, but you have to use the app to sideload them onto here, which is fine, it's not a difficult thing to do, but you've basically loaded up a web page that you want to read later. 
And the idea being that then you've got that focused reading without the distractions. For reading, this is great. But totally the range of options for watching Jim Carrey take the mick out of Joe Biden and Donald Trump, then you're going to want something with a beautiful color screen like this. <laughs> I mean, the iPad screens are really lovely. So iPads are great for video. They're great for viewing your photos on as well. And I also really like them for just browsing casually on the web. Media consumption is definitely a win for the iPad. So it's free to to the iPad now. So next, which device for teaching? Well, okay, for actually actively teaching on, there's not a lot you can do with this. You can share your screen, and you can share your screen to be accessed via the Remarkable app. So you need a computer with that app installed and then be sharing that screen. And yes, okay, you could use OBS or something to share that screen out there, but you'd still be sharing a black and white screen. There's no microphones on it, so you'd need to have some other solution for sharing your voice. Essentially, this is not something you'd use for teaching. That's not to say that as a teacher there isn't lots of uses for this. And certainly one thing you can do is mark up people's essays and it's really easy to email them back to them. So if somebody had sent you a PDF, you could do your marking on here. And I think that would be a really nice use. But that's one use compared to all of the many different teaching things that you can do with this. I've got another set of videos about using the iPad as an educator. And I'm really recommending GoodNotes now because that's the one app that I found that you can share a screen and have that come up full screen without just sharing the iPad screen ratio and it not covering the whole screen. There are some limits though, although you can record the screen, you can't record the screen if you're also sharing that screen. You can, and I do use this like it's the whiteboard, you can stream this wirelessly to the board at the front of the class and just walk around if you use an Apple TV, for example. It is Apple, so it's kind of locked down to just using their stuff. But you can, and lots of people do use this to make all their explainer videos, and it's a really powerful machine. And because it's an iPad, it's basically a big computer, there's loads of different apps out there to do so many different things for teachers, and the iPad's gonna win for the teaching category. So note-taking and organization is gonna be a win for the Remarkable. If you're the type of person that writes notes themselves, that keeps a diary, then this is a fantastic thing. I essentially have a two-week planner, and I put all my notes about the lessons that are coming up into this planner and every day I'm just working on one sheet of paper essentially which I never get lost. So I'm planning out all my days on these sheets of paper that are stored in here so I never lose them and if I forget to bring this it's all backed up to the cloud anyway. And I know exactly what I meant when I wrote down those two words and I put a ring around this word and it's very intuitive to use. It's actually really liberating because I'm not carting around much paper anymore. It's like a notebook, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pages here. So I'm just using the ordinary Remarkable software on here and okay, it is quite limited and there are lots of complaints about how limited the Remarkable software is compared to some other e-ink devices. So check those out if you are a bit worried about that. But actually, they've kept it simple, which kind of forces you to keep it simple as well. I'm not asking this to do too much, I'm just asking it to be my personal notebook and I think it's brilliant. Importantly, it feels like paper, but it weighs less than one notebook. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, so if you have an iPhone as well as a Mac, then maybe this will work for you better than the Remarkable. So I think you have to make that choice. I kind of like this, but I've not tried to use this for really organizing myself. One issue with it I have is that the battery life wouldn't last for more than a day. I'd have to charge it every night, like a phone, and well, I already have to do that. Whereas the Remarkable and other ink devices can last a week. And you know, if you're on an Android system, if you're a Samsung user, then you could read the same for a Samsung tab. You know, that would work really well across your device ecosystem. If you use Apple, then iPad is a great thing to go. You'll have the calendar synced, you have all your messages, etc. Then this could be a really powerful thing. But I will go back to the fact that you don't get any distractions on this because you don't get any notifications. I think that's a really useful thing about it. The fact that there are so many apps on this for every single possible thing you could think to do with it, I think makes this a really powerful option. But if you're just talking about taking notes and organizing yourself, I think the Remarkable pips it. So the iPad is ahead 4.3, and there's two more categories left. So the price, um, this is not a cheap device and I think it needs to be because it doesn't feel anywhere near as premium as the iPad. It's not a cheap device because actually it's still pretty much just a startup. But even the bigger brands for e-ink devices, they're still very expensive. 
And I think to really convince people that this is a device worth buying, then I think it does need to come down in price. Initially, when they launched this, the price was ridiculous. They launched this at 600 pounds, which is stupendous. It's now half of that, and I think it's still quite expensive. I use it every day, and I think I can therefore justify it, but I really do think that they need to make this kind of version, this kind of plasticky version, around 100 pounds. And then I think that people will be convinced enough to even give entire classes of students one of these to replace all of their notebooks. The problem is that you're buying some quite low spec computing components here. It's difficult to see where that £300 is really going compared to what you could get if you spend £300 on an iPad or even an Android tablet or even a computer or a Chromebook. But that shouldn't put you off if you're sure this will be a useful thing in your life. If you are concerned about that, do look at some of the other e-ink devices because some of them are pretty much like Android tablets but just with an e-ink screen. So that can make them quite compelling if you do feel like you need to get more bang for your buck. This is low on the bang, but nice on the usability. You can spend a lot of money on an iPad, and as I said, this is one of the iPad Pros, it's a slightly older model, but you can spend over a thousand pounds on an iPad Pro, or you can spend only about 300 pounds on a simple iPad. So it does depend on what you need. If you need all of the memory, if you need all of the storage, then you can spend a lot of money on an iPad and, and it might well be worth it for you. But you can also buy a simple iPad for about 300 quid and it will work with the Apple Pencil One and you'll be able to do just about everything of what I've talked about. It might not be the media editing computer that, that I've alluded to it could be, but you'll still be able to do the screen recording, you'll still be able to share it like a whiteboard. There's loads of different things. So just look at the feature set that you want. There's a whole range of features. And it pains me to say it because I think that Apple goods are usually too expensive, but actually the iPad's gonna win on price versus the Remarkable. It's just everything that it can do for that price point makes it more value for money. Either you're prepared to pay for the really feature-rich iPad Pro or you just need the £300 entry level. But either way, value for money, it's still gonna beat out the Remarkable. And especially if it's gonna be the one device that you buy, it's gonna be out the Remarkable. The Remarkable can't be your entire computing needs, whereas an iPad could be. So five free to the iPad and only one category left, but this is portability. Remarkable is a lot less than half the weight of this iPad. Remarkable is really light and portable. The battery life is better than the iPad, but you aren't doing such battery intensive tasks on it, so it's not really fair. <laughs> the Remarkable 2 is even better, and the Remarkable 2 should last one, maybe even two weeks, whereas I'm getting three days out of this, using it all day at work. It's more portable because it's small, but then that's a drawback as well. And really, probably I'd like something a little bit bigger than this to be my main notepad. The size of A5 paper is not quite as compelling as an A4 size one. There are trade-offs. This is actually quite heavy. It's not as heavy as a full laptop, but it's pretty heavy. But again, you can buy different sizes if you prefer a more portable thing. The thing about it is, is I know it's not quite portability, but the thing about it is that you have to charge it just about every day if you're gonna use it all day. You might not even get all day use out of it. Although I must say, just for things like watching video, you do get quite a long battery life from it. I'm quite impressed. So the winner in this comparison is the iPad 5 to 4, but I think you need to look at what it means to you, what are the most important categories to you, and buy respective to that. I think you also need to look at where it fits into your existing ecosystem. If you have a laptop, then perhaps you don't need an iPad, and actually the Remarkable might fit in better for you. If you have a desktop and you're wondering whether you need a laptop still, then maybe the iPad is the thing. So it's way closer than I thought it was gonna be. I thought the iPad was gonna win hands down. <laughs> Honestly, the iPad is the best thing, in my opinion, that Apple makes. I'm not a massive fan of Apple, but I must say the iPads are the best tablets that you can buy. But what it isn't is a replacement for your notebook. If I was to use this as my sole device, I would still find myself carrying around a lot of paper notebooks, which I like paper notebooks. There's nothing wrong with them, but this has been such an eye-opener in terms of replacing a lot of different paper notebooks. I don't have a different paper notebook at home, the, the one at school, to my planner, to all these different notebooks. Like this is it can be my sketchbook as well. And the thing about a good notebook is that there's no distractions. A notebook is a companion, it's a place for your thoughts. And I think there's a real future for this type of device. Let's hope that in the future they make this device for around 100 pounds and it can be accessible to more people. I'm thinking I'd really like Remarkable to make some specific use case devices. So make one which is bigger and a bit more responsive and has a bit more fully featured pen, maybe a few more pressure levels for drawing on. And maybe a smaller one for some people who like absolute pocketbook size. There's loads of room 
for this device to go into. I think if you buy the iPad expecting to absolutely love writing with the Apple Pencil, I think that you'll be disappointed. But I think the, the things like the matte screen protectors go some way towards making that better. And the fact that it can do so much more makes it a compelling device for most people. That's why it's one today, it's the sheer richness of the feature set. Likewise, if you're expecting the Remarkable to be more than just a digital notebook, then you're gonna be disappointed. Buy either of these devices, or both, but buy wisely and buy knowing what they can and can't do. I think if you buy an iPad expecting it to replace paper, I reckon you'll still end up carrying around pen and paper. And I think similarly, I think if you're buying this, expecting it to do everything that an Android tablet can do or an iPad can do, then you're gonna end up carrying around either a computer or get used to using your phone more for that type of thing or <laughs> carrying around an Android tablet or an iPad as well. They could have, for example, a premium leather bound one. They could have a big one, um, one that just stays on your desk, a small one for your pocket. There's loads of options and things they can make with this e-ink technology and this incredible device. So thanks a lot for watching Gorilla Physics. I hope you enjoyed that video and leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe for more things. I'll be looking at more technology to support teachers, educators and students in the future and also teach new GCSE and A-level physics.